everyone and welcome to my video blog about multimedia in the classroom. I am sending this blog out from my family's home in Okayama, Japan and specifically our tea house. Um, today, to illustrate my points about why multimedia is so useful in the classroom, I'll be teaching you a little bit about Japanese traditional tea ceremony. So the first point that I want to make about multimedia and learning is that you can make the impossible possible. Videos and multimedia can bring the real world into the classroom in a way that was previously unmanageable. Services like YouTube can connect institutions of learning like the Smithsonian and NASA and even your own classroom to one another in order to share a collective knowledge. And that is really the basis of what we want to do with progressive, constructivist, student-centered learning. Let's talk about tea ceremony. In America, it's very difficult to get tea ceremony lessons. It depends on where you live, what language you speak, and what resources are available to you. So today, since we're talking about making the impossible possible, let me show you three basic tools of Japanese tea ceremony. So, the first is this silk, it's orange, it's called a fukusa, and it's basically a handkerchief. In tea ceremony, we'll usually use it to clean things, and we fold it a very special way. Each side has a double seam, as a seam, except for one side. And that one side without a seam is the part that's going to go in the front. So we'll wear it here on our belt, or usually it's a kimono, but I'm not wearing a kimono today. So we'll have our fukusa here ready to clean things, and that's number one. Number two, the second equipment, is this. This is called a natsume, and it is the tea holder. So the tea that we use in tea ceremony is called matcha. Well, you can see this is from yesterday's practice. But matcha is kind of a powdered green tea. And there's actually a difference between the matcha that you can buy commercially in the store here in Japan or in the United States and the matcha that we use for tea ceremony. Almost all of the matcha for tea ceremony comes out of Kyoto, Japan, um, because basically all tea from Japan comes from Kyoto, too. And the last equipment that we use in tea ceremony is a tea scoop, which we call a chashaku. And the chashaku is usually made of a material like bamboo, although there are plenty of other materials that they use to make chashaku. And we'll use this as a tea scoop, and it never, ever, ever touches soap or water. Now look at that! Because of the power of multimedia and the internet, you now know three equipment tools used in Japanese tea ceremony. Who knew the internet could be so great? Let's move on to the next point, point two. Videos mean more memorable material in less time. Basically, if a picture is worth a thousand words, how much is a movie worth? According to a 1989 article by R. Green entitled The Persuasive Properties of Color, color visuals increase willingness to read by 80%. Now I learned that information not from reading the original article, but from watching an animated infographic by Neomam Studios called 13 Ways Your Brain Craves Infographics. And because of that same infographic, I was also reminded of the fact that people remember 10% of what they hear, 20% of what they read, and 80% of what they see and do. So now that you've listened to my second point about how videos and multimedia make information more engaging, let me show you how to fold your fukusa. This is actually quite difficult and took me a very long time to learn. but. You have your fukusa in your belt here, and in order to prepare it so that you can wipe the tea holder, the natsume, and the tea scoop, the chashaku, you have to fold it. So first, take it out of the belt, you fold it once, twice, and you pull it out of your belt. Then, you take the top fold, and you pull it out into a triangle. Now this part is the important point. The first time when you're cleaning the natsume, which is always first, you have to make a ton sound. So the tone, let's see if I can make it, tone. So once you make the tone, you pull up the handkerchief and you use one hand to fold it once and then twice, right? And then you can fold it down and across. Then you use your hand here and you fold it once and then twice. And then just for cleaning the natsume, you fold it in half. And when you have this, this is its folded form, ooh, lovely. Then you can take your natsume and you can wipe the top and the bottom of the top. And that's how you prepare your fuksa to wipe your natsume. 
But enough about tea ceremony. Let's get back to our discussion about multimedia. Point number three. Web 2.0 tools are making student creation and use of multimedia possible. At my school, the third and fourth graders are um, creating their own videos using the cameras built into their laptops and YouTube editor. The process of scripting, rehearsing, shooting, and editing the videos means that the students are engaging with the material at a much deeper level. The added benefit of this project is that the final product, the video, can also be used as a learning tool from anywhere. The students can access it from home, from the school, or um, when they're going abroad. I can personally attest to the fact that the creation of this video blog means that I did plenty of tea ceremony practice and I also did plenty of rehearsal with the script for this multimedia blog. So by the end of this blog, I'm going to be an expert in two things apparently. So now that we've talked about how the creation of multimedia can be a great student-centered learning opportunity, let me show you how to clean the chashaku or the tea scoop. So you're going to fold it essentially the same way, except that you're not going to have a ton sound. So let me show you. You can just watch. I'll do it. Fold once, twice, and out. Take the top fold. You have the familiar triangle shape and no ton. But the rest of it you fold exactly the same way. So one, two, fold over, fold under, one, two, and then the chashaku is special because we actually don't even clean it with water. Um, the reason I'm guessing is so it doesn't degrade the taste and the flavor of the matcha, but I should probably ask my aunt about that. So you clean it once and on the sides and then on the front once. And then now you have a cleanish chashaku. Like I said before, all of the equipment that we use in tea ceremony, we clean with water and no soap. And the reason why is because we don't want to degrade the quality of the equipment, which is sometimes hundreds of years old. Um, so let's move on to our next point. And the last point, number four. Multimedia enables us to connect directly to the rest of the world. This is a thing that's very specific to our time now. In addition to YouTube type tools, we also have video enabled communication through Google Hangouts and also Skype. Those things can empower the student in a way that was previously unimaginable. According to a 2013 Editopia article by Mary Beth Hertz entitled How Educators in Schools Can Make the Most Out of Google Hangouts, any students over the age of 13 can create a Google Hangout by themselves and to explore his or her own interests by connecting with people that are like-minded around the world or experts. This concept of using things like Skype and Google Hangouts to connect your students to people who are actually experts in the field reinforces modern teaching theories that identify teachers as guides as opposed to the singular sources of information in the classroom. This opens the classroom to an entire world of possibilities and that's really why, in a nutshell, multimedia can be one of the greatest tools to use in your classrooms today. Of course, you have to use it in the correct way. Using videos to replace teacher-centered learning is actually not the best use of multimedia. So now we're basically at the end of our video. Let's review the main points. One, multimedia makes the impossible possible. Number two, more memorable material in less time. Number three, Web 2.0 makes student-centered creation and use of multimedia possible. Number four, multimedia directly connects the student to the rest of the world. And while we're at it, let's go over the three tools that you can use in tea ceremony. Number one, the fuksa, or handkerchief. Number two, the natsume, or tea holder. Number three, the chashaku, or tea scoop. Thank you very much for listening to my very strange and random presentation. I hope that you learned a lot about multimedia and also about tea ceremony. If you have any questions, please post them in my blog. Thank you and have a good weekend.